But let's talk about the panhandle. A lot of people assume that West Texas includes all of the panhandle and the country all the way out to El Paso. Really, those are two different and distinct zones from the West Texas I just described. So the panhandle, for our purposes, starts just about a mm, little north of uh, Abilene, a little north of Big Spring, and goes all the way to the Oklahoma border, uh, is bordered by Oklahoma on the east and in the north, and New Mexico on the west. The panhandle is marked by a gradually broken country that heads all the way up to yet another major escarpment and uplift in Texas that is known as the Cap Rock. So vast seeds of grass and vast vistas uh, are typical of panhandle terrain. This image of a road in the Texas panhandle shows you that there are just miles and miles of miles and miles in the Texas panhandle. It's a great place for looking at the sky because it's easy to see in the Texas panhandle. The panhandle is also a great place to watch the weather roll in. And it's uh, oftentimes uh, host to some pretty remarkable weather events. Here you can see some thunderstorms building up in an afternoon sky, but also notice what's going on underneath. West Texas and the Panhandle are host or home to pretty constant wind currents. And these wind currents recently have been harvested uh, with wind turbines and turned into electricity. Here's an image of the Cap Rock. This is where the land of the rolling plains gives way to the panhandle country of the Llano Estacado, or the Staked Plains. Uh, two different stories on how it became known as the Staked Plains. One is that this Cap Rock looks something like a palisade, or stakes set upright in the um, earth. Another is that once you get up on top of that uplift up on top of that cap rock that the ground is so featureless that you have to drive a stake into the ground to remember which way you've come. Uh, rumor has it that that's what, how Coronado in his Spanish expedition in the 1540s navigated that country. I don't know which story I believe, but both of them are a pretty good yarn. This cap rock is host to, um, or one of the features of this cap rock, is the Palo Dura Canyon. And the Palo Dura Canyon is the largest canyon in Texas and is an extensive uh, array of arroyos and gullies and washouts uh, where the edge of the cap rock is deeply uh, indented uh, by the um, uh, sources of the um, Brazos River and the Red River. Uh, Palo Dura Canyon uh, hosted a lot of um, uh, places for the indigenous peoples to live. It hosted a lot of game, uh, and it was a, a pretty remarkable feature in country that was a little short of remarkable features. Here's an image of the Cap Rock with the Llano Estacado above it. And as you can see, the, there's a marked difference in the way the country looks. East of that cap rock, it's broken terrain where the rolling plains give way. Above it, it is pancake flat, but with a very nice deep topsoil. And intensive agriculture follows when you get up above the cap rock onto the Llano Estacado. Capital of the Panhandle, I'm going to give this award to Amarillo. Amarillo is one of the salient uh, market centers of the Texas Panhandle, but Lubbock comes in pretty doggone close. Amarillo has a mixed uh, uh, economy. Uh, Lubbock is driven in large part by the presence of Texas Tech University.